What up, Raffleators? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to discuss the oil industry, Guyana's oil industry, and first oil. Recently, there was an editorial in the newspaper, the national newspaper here in Guyana, about the future of Guyana's oil economy by Melinda Janke. And she brings uh, the point of view of the environmentalist. She raises the points about global warming, about the need to retain, restrain the global temperature rise of to 2 degrees Celsius or less over the next uh, 20 years or so. And she also points out that Guyana is below sea level and that we will be overcome or flooded as the sea level rises. And for that reason, she argues, Guyana should abandon oil. We should leave the oil in the ground. And I think that is nonsense. I think there is a much more balanced view that we can take. And in this video, I will explain to you what a balanced review of Guyana's oil industry and first oil should be. Stay tuned. Oh, this is my, this is my, this is my day. Ready to take it on, come what may. So the first thing you want to talk about is the consumers of oil. If you want to talk about global warming, then you must identify who the major culprits are. So the top 10 consumers of oil globally do not include Guyana. They are United States, number one, China, number two. There's Japan, there's India, there is Canada, there is France. They are all in the top 10. They account for 58% of the consumption of oil in the world. So 58% of the oil that is used in the world is consumed by the top 10 consumers of oil. Guyana is nowhere in there. If you're going to uh, have an impact on global warming, on global climate change, on uh, temperature rise, then those 10 nations are the first nations that have to do something about it. No amount of uh, conservation or restraint by Guyana will have an impact if they don't do anything. Do you understand? So the first thing is Guyana is not in the top 10. Number two, the US military is the single largest institution, institutional consumer of oil. So if there is one institution in the entire world that consumes the most oil, that is the US military. They have military bases all over the world. So, if you are going to put a, an ide identify the consumer and the demand that's driving the need for oil, the number one consumer is the U.S. military, and they and their military bases would have to be identified. So, unless you intend to restrain or somehow convince the U.S. military to cut back on its demand for oil, you will have no impact, very little impact on the global demand for oil. And the reality is that with China rising and expanding its military and putting out military bases, the trend is that the military will drive the demand for oil in future. And unless you can convince me or anyone else to work towards world peace, unless we can achieve world peace, then the demand, the global demand for oil will continue to rise. Number three is the transition period. So we are trans transiting to renewable energies. We're going to be seeing uh, electric cars, electric vehicles, whether it be buses or um, cars or electric scooters and so on, becoming more prevalent and dominant on the road. But like I said in a previous video, this only accounts for about 5% of the demand for oil. So vehicular transportation accounts for about 5% of the demand for oil. And the transition to renewable energy, although it's actually taking off and renew, uh, moving very rapidly in countries like China and India and parts of South America and North America, and even Europe, Germany, Norway, this will take some time before it begins to replace the demand for oil. And there are estimates that it will take the entire century, the rest of the 21st century, before we can make a significant 
uh, cut back in our demand for oil by transferring our um, demand to renewable energy. It will take about the rest of this century before renewable energy can replace the demand for oil. That's because we still need agricultural vehicles like combines and bulldozers and so on to be powered by fossil fuels. You can't power them by electricity or by the sun yet. And while you might have high-speed rail that is powered by electricity, and we might have um, large vehicles like trams, right, can be powered by electric um, lines, power lines. Our air, air transportation industry, which is growing year after year over year, will continue to use fossil fuels. You know, you're not going to have an electric um, Boeing 7, uh, 700 series aircraft or an Airbus you know, A380 that is powered by electricity. These are demands for fuel that will persist perhaps for the rest of the century. So there you have three of the reasons why we still need oil in the 21st century. So what is Guyana's uh, position? What our position should be? Well, we have to be able to prepare for the possible rise in sea level and to be able to move our population away from the coast. So how are we going to do that? We need money. Right? So we are trapped in this cycle. If we abandon our oil in the ground, we will not have the money that we require to move our population away from the coast. So we need to produce oil so that we have money for development and so that we have money to prepare for the possible negative impacts of global warming, global climate change. So, guys, this is a much more balanced view of why we still need to produce oil, we still need to develop our oil resources. And like I said, my calculation is that we, set, we see have about 15 years supply of oil, so we don't have much time to make hay. In other words, we need to sell our oil, we need to um, gather, obtain uh, resources, finances, to prepare for the inevitability of global climate change and its impact on Guyana. So there you have it, guys. Those are my positions on Guyana's oil industry. Full speed ahead, let us drill, let us produce oil, and let us sell our oil. If you want to see more content like this, click like and subscribe. If you have an opinion that either differs from this or agrees with this, leave it in the comments below. Remember to share this video with friends and family around the world and let them know what is happening in Guyana. Later!